What's going on guys? So today we're going to go over some last minute tips before you leave for basic training. So I get questions all the time, like almost on a daily basis of like, oh I'm leaving for basic training, what are some tips that you have for me whenever I go to basic training or you know I'm leaving for basic training, just what are some tips, right? So. This video is geared towards you guys who maybe haven't watched a whole lot of my videos before and you just want to know some tips like you're about to leave for basic training maybe next week, maybe in the next couple of weeks and you want to know a few tips that will help you improve yourself at basic training and some, in my opinion, I'm going to give you guys some tips on just how to have a overall better experience for yourself while you're at basic training. Now I'm going to say the first two things that I'm going to talk about is something I've said before really briefly, but number one, don't pack a whole lot of stuff. You only need to pack what you uh, like, what you really need, and I've talked about that before in past videos. And then number two, make sure you get a good night's rest the night before you leave for reception, because like the, it's likely that the first night at reception you're not going to get much sleep at all maybe an hour or two if you're lucky and you could also go the entire time the entire first day into the second day without getting any sleep whatsoever so get some sleep the night before and those are my first two little tips for you so when you're actually at basic training you're going to be surrounded by all these kinds of different people and you've never really encountered you, you've never known any of them before, right? Unless you went in with a buddy system. But for the most part, you've never known any of these people before. You've kind of just met them at reception. You've known them a few days, right? Now, when you actually get to the basic training portion of basic training, not the reception portion, because those drill sergeants that you're gonna have at reception, you're never gonna see them again, right? Once you get to basic training and you have those drill sergeants, they're going to be looking at you. They're going to be watching all of you. They're going to be seeing, is this private a good private? Is this private a good private? You know, what, well, who are my troublemakers, right? So these drill sergeants, they're just normal people. They're about to be with you for like the next 10 weeks or so. And so they're kind of scoping the place out just like you are. And they're trying to figure out who are the troublemakers? Who are the bad guys? Who are the good guys? Who are the people that I can count on? So if you know the whole platoon is doing something wrong, who is the guy that I can count on to ask and basically be the snitch for the entire platoon? So they're doing their thing. They're looking at you guys. And something I want you to keep in mind is for that first few days, first week or so at basic training, be careful who you hang out with. Now I'm not saying to don't associate or don't hang out with anybody, but your little group, your little circle, the people that you communicate with the most, your circle of friends that you're gonna have at basic training, if they are the troublemakers, because there's going to be troublemakers in your platoon of 50 people, 60 people, there's gonna be people who are troublemakers. And your drill sergeants are gonna pick up on that really quickly and if you are associated with those people obviously again you are going to be talking with them working with them as a team and stuff like that but like if the drill sergeants associate you with them then whenever something goes wrong whenever something bad happens whenever they want to pick somebody for a bad duty uh, they are not going to give you the benefit of the doubt again these these drill sergeants are just normal they're just normal people and if they don't trust you, then they're just not gonna trust you. And that's just gonna make your time at basic training much worse if you kind of start off on the wrong foot. So my advice to you is when you get to basic training, make sure you kind of scope the people out. Make sure you're not, you know, associating with the wrong people. And you know, if you find out like, hey, this guy, this guy's a you know a piece of crap, you know, maybe I should kind of distance myself a little bit, maybe go see if I can make some other friends and whatnot, and still, you know, talk to them. Again, I'm not saying to blow people off, totally ignore people because basic training you have to kind of work together as an entire group and the more you can work together the better but there's definitely going to be some people that you should not uh kind of latch on to next i want to talk about actually making it through basic training and just a way and a mindset shift that you can have going through basic training that might help you that might make things seem just a little bit easier or not so bad and that is realizing that basic training is only a short period of time so my tip for you guys, if you're about to leave soon, remember whenever you actually get to basic training, day one, the shark attack, the first phase, red phase of basic training, is going to be one of the most tough phases of, you know, your... Of you. Red phase is the phase where it seems like you're just constantly getting smoked, you're just constantly getting in trouble, you're constantly going through all this bull crap and doing all this stuff, and I want you guys to remember, 
when you're getting smoked, when you're going through this initial initiation process of the military of basic training, and you're doing these long ruck marches, if you're not really physically in shape and you kind of can't handle the physical activity or you don't think you can handle it, just remember that it's going to be over. When your drill sergeant is pissed at you and they're smoking you and it seems like they've been smoking you for hours or so, just remember, it's going to be over. And that's something to keep in mind for basic training and that it's all temporary, okay? So whether you're getting smoked, whether you're thinking about basic training in general, whether you're thinking about red phase or white phase or blue phase or whatever it is, the FTX that you're gonna go to, it's all gonna be temporary and it's all going to last just a finite amount of time. Like things aren't going to last forever. And that's something that you can think about. So when you're getting smoked, just do what you gotta do. Just do what you gotta do and just keep on going because the longer you're getting smoked, the closer you are until you're done being smoked. So think about things like that and just remember that it all comes to an end. Everything is gonna have an end and that's gonna kinda help you get through the mental block of basic training, thinking certain things suck and sometimes thinking that it's never going to end because it will end, but sometimes you might get that mindset of it just feels like it's going on forever. And if you remember that, it might help you out a little bit on the mental side at basic training. Now I wanna talk about two things where I'm basically contradicting myself one after the other. And that is number one, you should probably try and fly under the radar at basic training. And two, you should not fly under the radar at basic training. So if you want to be that honor graduate, that guy who graduates at the top of his class at, 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 in your platoon or in your company, you wanna be that guy that gets that Army Achievement Medal or whatever the case may be, if you wanna be that guy, you're gonna to have to be out there. The drill sergeant is gonna to have to actually know who you are, right? So you're gonna to have to do things. You're gonna try and have to score well in your, your PT test. You're gonna to have to try and uh, purposefully get those leadership positions, make it known that you want to be a leader. So it's gonna make you a little bit more known by the drill sergeants. They're gonna know who you are and if you wanna be that honor graduate, that's kinda of how you can go about that. But if you want to kind of just coast through basic training, if you don't really care too much about being the leader, which is more stressful, it is by far way more stressful being the actual leader uh, at basic training, whether that's a squad leader or your platoon leader or your assistant platoon leader, which would be the platoon sergeant. That kind of route where you're the leadership is much more stressful. But if you want to fly under the radar, if you want the drill sergeant to not know who, who you are at all, if literally it's happened before, it's happened in, in my platoon or whatever, like if literally the last week of basic training, you want your drill sergeant to look at you and be like, who are, like, who are you? Have you been here the whole time? And every now and then they'll do that. And that's usually the guy that's kind of just like coasted under the radar for a little bit. He kind of just didn't do anything special. He kind of just did what he was supposed to do. Didn't complain, just obeyed his orders. Uh, you know, just didn't do a whole lot of extra special above the top stuff. And they kind of just coasted through basic training. And it's a little bit easier doing that, right? So if you want that basic training experience should just be literally as easy as possible, then just try to fly under the radar. And ways you can do that is honestly just to not really volunteer for a whole lot of stuff and, and not really talk to the drill sergeants in general. So like whenever there's situations, whenever you can talk to a drill sergeant, just you know, don't talk to them, don't let them know who you are. Don't really volunteer or you know, if you're doing something really well like now, flying under the radar is the approach that I tried to take at basic. I didn't want to be the leader. I knew that from hearing people in the past who've been in basic training that being the leader at basic training was just super stressful, it was just harder, and it was much easier to just fly under the radar. And that was my plan going into basic training. I didn't want people to know who I was. I just wanted to get to basic training. I wanted to just do it, complete it with as little controversy, as little stress and stuff as possible. And then I wanted to finish. It was a short time in my life and I just wanted to get it over with, right? But for me, that didn't really work out that well. Um, I didn't volunteer to be the platoon leader. Basically my platoon elected me to be the platoon leader. Uh, I had a really good PT score and stuff like that. And whenever that happens, it's kind of hard to be under the radar. It's kind of hard for the drill sergeants to not know who you are. And actually, before I became the platoon leader, I think it was the second week of basic training, I had done pretty good not with with allowing the drill sergeants to not have a clue who I was. And an example of that was whenever we did the Pugles event, which is the event where uh, you basically, you put on a football helmet and you get the little stick with the pads on the end and you go and you fight other people. And I had won that overall event of everybody, right? And I remember the drill sergeant coming up to me and after the 
first or second person that I defeated. It was, no, it was the first person that I beat, um, which I just smashed, like smashed. Um, not trying to brag on myself, but I just destroyed him. It was hilarious. But he comes over to me, picks my arm up, and it says, the winner is whoever this guy is. And at this time, the second week of basic training, your drill sergeants have been around you for a while. They've been talking to you on a daily basis. They've been seeing you. They've been trying to memorize names. And I thought, I thought of this as like a really good thing. I was like, huh, this drill sergeant doesn't know my name. So this is awesome. Because if the drill sergeants know your name, then they are going to look at you a whole lot more. They're going to call you out in a crowd and stuff like that. So I thought this was a great accomplishment. But it was like the first thing that I really did to kind of stand out for the drill sergeants where I just like demolish people in this fighting thing called pugils, right? So if you're like me, it might be a little bit difficult to, to fly under the radar because like I'm not going to do bad on the PT test. I'm not going to do bad in some kind of fighting event or anything like that. And then I try to sit back and not be a leader sometimes whenever you know things are going on and I try to let other people take it because I didn't I didn't want to be the leader at basic training but you know when people see me and um, and they saw that I was you know a really good leader in the small groups and stuff that they were doing whenever the drill sergeants came and they they asked basically everybody like who do you want to be the platoon leader they nominated two people I was one of those people and I had the higher PT score so therefore I became the platoon leader and the rest of basic training is history I was a platoon leader like the entire time at basic training I did a good job I was a good leader um, and I didn't fly under the radar at all but I feel like I got super sidetracked there with that story but there's two ways that you can go about basic training and that is number one try to fly under the radar it's gonna be a little bit easier for you that way Number two, you can try not to fly under the radar and try to be that leader, right? And and I guess it could be a little bit easier for you if you like to be in charge and stuff like that. But, you know, if you want to be a leader, my advice to you is to volunteer, to actually try your best at everything that you're doing, and then to, you know, make it known a little bit. Not be like, oh, I'm a better leader than you. Oh, I should be that. But just kind of, you know, make it known that you're totally up for being the squad leader. You're totally up for the challenge of being the platoon leader. Make that known and it might happen. My final tip for you guys is if you're leaving for basic training, maybe you've never been away from home before, you're gonna miss your family, you're gonna miss your kids if you have kids, or your wife, your husband, if you're married. My final tip for you guys is when you're at basic training, you're gonna be separated and taken away from the entire rest of the world. It's gonna kind of feel like you're in an entirely different world. You're gonna be just totally separated. And a lot of people struggle with that. A lot of people really struggle with that. And that is really because they think about it way, way, way too much. They think like every day, every night about wanting to go home, about wanting to do this, about missing their family. And that's totally okay. And I've talked about it before, but in my opinion, the best way to kind of deal with these things is to think about it a little bit less. So if you miss your family and stuff, that's totally fine. You can write them letters, you can do that, and you know, you can call them, you know, every couple weeks whenever you get that chance. But sulking and thinking a whole lot about your family is just, it's just not very productive. There's not a whole lot of good that comes from that rather than just being sad and being depressed and being upset that you're still at basic training and you want to go home, you want to see your family, right? So the best way, in my opinion, is just literally just Try not to think about it. Try to, you know, hang out with your buddies. Talk about army stuff. You know, get immersed in what you're doing when you're at base training. Because if you can get immersed in it, if you just, you know, try to love what you're doing, because there's some really fun days at base training. And if you just get immersed in that, then it's just gonna make base training go by that much faster. But if you're just missing every single moment of your family and just everything, like all the time, it's gonna make basic training feel so much longer. So that's my final advice to you, is just to try to get immersed in basic training. It's only gonna be a short period of time, but it could feel like forever if you kind of take it day by day. If like you're, if you're counting every single day, just waiting until the last day of basic training, it's gonna feel a lot longer. Like have you ever looked at a clock and watched it tick around the second clock, tick around. And that minute felt like it took forever, but it was because you were watching, you were paying attention to it. Don't pay attention to it, guys. Just go day by day, day by day, day by day. Do what you gotta do, and before you know it, you're gonna be like, hey, freaking family day is next week, and you're gonna be like all excited, you're done with your final FTX, and then now all you gotta do is basically chill and clean, and you know, basic training's gonna be over before you know it. Now, AIT, on the other hand, if you have a super long AIT, like, six months or so like 
that's that's gonna be long but as far as basic training goes just do what you got to do get immersed in it and i think you'll be okay so there's always going to be many 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 more tips that i can give you guys when you're leaving for basic training but these are just some some things that i want you to think about some things that i want you to do even when you're at basic training just some final tips for you but again there's gonna be many more tips if i think of more things you know maybe in the future i'll make another one of these videos with you know final tips before basic training but i hope you guys enjoyed this video that's gonna be it for this video if you did enjoy it hit that like button if you do have any comments questions or concerns you can leave your comments down below or you can hit me up on instagram and snapchat that's been the way to go recently so like if you really want to get your question answered um the comments are i get a lot of comments and i answer comments on all of my past videos too so like if you leave a comment on a video from four months ago i'm still going to answer that and so those kind of add up but if you really want to get in touch with me hit me up on instagram or snapchat and i'll be sure to get back with you um, as soon as i can and if you want to hit that subscribe button to subscribe for some more of these videos in the future Feel free to do that, and I will see you guys later. Yeah.